In this video, we're going to explore the different ways that you can create a new design page inside the Floriani software. There's a few different things that you can do, and there's different reasons why you'd use different methods. So when you first open up the software, you know that you get the My Floriani Today page, and that's what you see on the screen right now. And to create a new design page, it's as simple as just clicking on this icon right here, create a new design. Now, if you want to open up a design, instead of just opening a blank design page, you can click on this icon right here, open a design, and it will open up your Windows Explorer that allow you to navigate to a design on your computer and open it up. Now, the next thing that you can do is you can actually use the Open Recently Used. And if you click this option, it's going to open the last design that you worked on. So it's kind of a nice um, tool to have if you have been working on a design um, quite a bit and you've been saving it coming back the next day and that's the only design you've been working on this is a great tool to use so we'll just go ahead and click on create a new design and that's going to open up a new design page and the design pages all have a tab up at the top so you can see right here it says design 2 and design 1 that's because I already had a design page open so it just added a new one and and it just continued that name now if you have a design and you save it, it will actually change the name to that design. So it's kind of a, a nice feature. And I wanna go ahead and show you the other ways of opening up a design page. So let's say you're wanting to start something new. You can just come up here and you can create um, a new page by clicking this new icon right here. And if I click this, you'll notice that it opens up another design page. So these are just tabbed design pages that you can have multiple designs open at the same time. Um, there's also other ways of opening up a, a new design page that are a little bit different. And that is by coming up to File and clicking on New. And when you go to File and New, it gives you this new page um, dialog box. Now this is kind of really neat. Like if you know that you're going to digitize the design, you're going to digitize it for a certain fabric type like let's say a knit t-shirt you can come in right here and you can choose um, this drop down for style and this is actually accessing all the save to sew um, templates and so i can come right in and i can choose for instance knit t-shirt i digitized and if i select that and then i can even choose my default um, machine format so let's go ahead and just choose PES here and I click OK and you'll notice it'll open up a new design page and this one will be design page number four so what makes this one different well first let me come back to this design page three and I'm going to grab um, one of the digitizing tools I'm just going to choose the um, first I'll, I'll just do a shape that'll be easier so I'll create a shape I'll select it and I'm going to click on standard fill I'm going to convert it to a standard fill down here at the bottom and I'm going to zoom into it and I'm going to select the shape tool which I can click this little icon right here And when I do that I want you to notice that the stitches are going right to the edge of the line here there is no compensation added or anything like that if I come over to the properties box, you'll notice that I have a perpendicular. This is a default for every fill pattern. If you just open up a design page, it'll always do this and it will always put the standard density of 0.5, stitch length of 3.5. These are just the standard settings. And if I come over to push and pull, you'll see that there's nothing applied to it. So now let's go to the design tab four. And this is the one that I opened up using the file new and I selected a template. So let me go ahead this time and just create another shape. And I'm going to select it and I'm gonna convert it to a fill. And I'm gonna zoom into it and I'm gonna click on this shape edit tool and I want you to see the difference here. So notice that the stitches are now going outside of the line and if I come up here, you'll see that I still have the same density, which is good. Um, 0.5 for a knit is really good. 
If I come to the underlay, I want you to see the difference here. Now I have a contour and a perpendicular. It automatically applied these to this shape. And that's because I'm using that save to sew um, template. And if I come over to push and pull, notice that it automatically applied 0.5 um, millimeters of pull and 0.4 millimeters of push. Now, the reason that this is so unique is that it's it's going to automatically do a lot of the work for you based on the type of material that you're going to stitch onto. Now, do you have to make adjustments from time to time? Yes, but this is a great way of making it faster to digitize a design for a specific fabric that you're going to um, put the design onto. And this is something that very few people really know exists and, and why and what it does. So I'm going to come back here again to this design three and let's just take a look again. Notice that the stitches are not overlapping. You'll see perpendicular for the underlay and you'll see there's no push or pull. If I come back to design four, you'll notice that it's extending and it's actually um, cutting off the ends to allow for the push to take place so that it retains the shape. If I come back and click on it, if I go to the push and pull, you can see that that's applied. So this is just a really, really neat um, feature of the software that I hope that more people will utilize. Now, the one thing I will say is don't get too caught up on all the options when you go to file new. There's so many different um, options here. Normal is is basically when you hit the new icon and it brings up a design page, it's automatically setting it to normal, just so you know. That's the default. Um, that's what you saw on design three here. Um, but you can select anything you want here. The big thing is to remember you're always working with either a knit material, a woven material, um, a man-made material, or like leather, pleather, um, or something like um, a really um, sheer fabric. So just go to the defaults like piquet knit. That's a great just generic um, knit fabric template, right? So you can just go to the knit, and you can just go to a woven. You can go, you know, just your basic standard um, fabric types because all of these in here there might be a bunch of different names but most of the settings are the same so really you just need to focus on if it's a knit a woven a sheer fabric or something like leather that's man-made or pleather or you know something like that you can just use the leather um, setting if you're doing something like polar fleece you might want to choose the polar fleece um, but there's a lot of options and Later videos will show you how to kind of make your own, but denim is another good one if you know you're putting on denim. But this is just a great way of bringing in a design, getting the software to apply settings specifically for it. So that's how you create different um, design pages for the software. Now, the other thing that I want to point out is when you click on the different design tabs, you'll see that it goes to that page. You can select one, click and drag it into a different position. This is something that I do quite a bit because it's not uncommon for me to be working on some designs for videos or something that, and it's going all the way across. And if there's specific ones I want to work with, I'll just click on them and drag them into place so that they're easier to find. So that's something that you can do as well. So I hope this video was helpful on how to create new design pages in the software and the different reasons why you would use the different methods.